I'm so grateful for my voice. I'm so grateful. You will know the reason why when I finish preaching. Praise God. This is a short exhortation on... I, I tie to this how to respond when things are out of control. Don't worry, it's going to get cooler because the music is reduced. In fact, this is a big testimony. Let me tell you why it's a testimony. When we're going to expand the church, the church will expand it by 300% plus. We had the meeting and someone said, oh, when we expand it, I hope we're going to reduce the services because now it's 300% plus um, percent increase. And I said, let's wait and see what the Lord will do. We've expanded the service. The hall is 300% bigger than last year. And today, none from the second, third, fourth service, none has been able to contain us. We've had people standing outside. Hallelujah. And that is the faithfulness of the Lord. That's just the grace of the Lord. One of the things I want to talk about today is how do you stay thankful? Everybody, it's easy to be thankful when things are great. It's easy to be thankful when you just got married when you just got a 25 million naira contract, when you just got this job that pays you $100,000, when all your debts are paid, you just moved to a new apartment, it's easy to be thankful. It's very easy to be thankful. But how can you, or why should you even be thankful if God, if you prayed about something and what you prayed about hasn't happened yet? Then when I read the Bible, I found Jesus Christ in a similar situation. And it touched me because you would almost think that every time Jesus Christ did something, there was instantaneous answer. So in John chapter 11, something different happened. Jesus' friend was sick. His name is Lazarus. And when Jesus' friend Lazarus was sick, Jesus gave a word. And he told, and the word was this. He said, this sickness will not lead to what? Death. Think about this. If your brother or your dad was sick and Jesus Christ appeared, Jesus Christ came down from heaven, you saw him physically, and he looked at you and said, your father's death is not unto, your father's sickness is not unto death. What would you do? If I were you, I would even discharge my dad from the hospital. Yes or no? Because I'm like, this is the word of Jesus. There's nothing, there's nothing stronger than the word of Jesus. I would say, dad, don't worry. Jesus has given the word. He will not die. Then the shocking thing happens. Lazarus died. When he died, you know, I'm thinking that how did Thomas and Judas Iscariot re re respond to it? Thomas was like, I told you that this guy is not as powerful as you think. I told you this guy is not as powerful as you think. Judas Iscariot said, I knew there was something fishy all along. I knew there was something fishy all along. I knew there was something fishy all along. So that's what they said. Peter was like, mm. Peter began to say nonsense. Then all of a sudden, I was thinking, what can I learn from Jesus here? Here where? When God promises you something and instead of things to get better, they get better. How, what can I learn when God says that the business will do fine and the first three years in the business, you sank into debts that make profits? What can I learn when God leads into a relationship and after four years of seriously intensive giving your all data, the guy walks out of the relationship and the same God he told him brought him in is what he claims takes him out. What can I learn when, when after I fasted and prayed, I'm still not pregnant? What can I learn after I believed God for that? My visa, my application, my proposals was denied. I, I was looking at that. I said, how does Jesus deal with this? He was the one that said, Lazarus will not be unto death. And the same person saw Lazarus dead. Because for me... I will be throwing tantrums. I'll be like, God, why? I'm like, God, why? Why do you intend to embarrass me? Why do you intend to look at me? Why do you intend to do this? So I'm saying, how did Jesus Christ respond to this? Because if I were Jesus Christ, I would just go on strike. I would just tell the Father, I say, Father, I thought we were a team. How can you tell me something and you change behind my back? What did Jesus Christ say? John chapter 11 verse 41. And the reason I'm sharing this is, in this teaching... You're going to learn how to practically make Thanksgiving a perspective, a way of life. John chapter 11 verse 41. Let's, let's read the scripture and we'll get into this. The Bible says this. And they took away the stone. This was where the blessing was dead. From where the dead was laid. So Jesus Christ saw the dead. 
And Jesus just came to say, Father, what's going on? God, when? God, why? God, this, God, that. The Bible says, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I hate you. Is that what he said? Father, I'm confused. He said, Father, why are you doing this to me? He said, Father, why don't you love me? Father, why are you embarrassing me? He didn't say that. He looked and said, He said, Father, I thank you because you hurt me. What was Jesus trying to teach us? If there's a word on your life and things are not going well, approach the delay with thanksgiving. What was Jesus trying to teach us? If God promised you something and things are going south and it's really bad, the marriage that God promised you is being delayed, the, the job that God promised you is being delayed, God told you that this is your marriage or relationship and the guy walks out of it, he says, approach that with what? Thanksgiving. And that's a difficult thing to do. The reason why is that when things go wrong, we approach it, we complain, we bitterness, we grumbling and murmuring. And Jesus Christ said, that's not how it works. Learn to approach. So, for example, when things go well, we approach with thanksgiving. When things have challenges, we approach with what? With murmurings. We're saying, God, why have you forsaken me? I thought you were faithful. Have you gotten so upset with God that you refuse to pray? Have you gotten so upset with God that you didn't do Bible study for some time? Have you gotten so upset with God that you didn't come to church again? Can I give you another one? Have you gotten so upset with God that when people give their testimony, they annoy you with their testimony? I'm telling you, people get so upset because they're like, oh my, this guy is making this up. It just likes the microphone. God cannot be doing so many great things for just one person. He has not even done my own. And you get so upset with God. See, I thought that that's how I just could get upset. He should have said, said, God, what is happening? But instead of him to say that, he responded with thanksgiving. Just imagine that the relationship you had had for four years, where you think that God spoke to you, the guy leaves. And instead of you to say, God, why are you doing this to me? Why are you failing me? You say, Father, I thank you. That response is epic. You're believing God for, for some document approval. The approval comes in only that is a denial. And you lift up your hands towards heaven and say, Father, I thank you. What was Jesus trying to teach us here? One, he was trying to teach us that gratitude should be our response to everything we do. That either things are going well, we respond with gratitude. Either things are not going well, we respond with gratitude. Either there was an abuse, we respond with gratitude. Either there's inflation, we respond with gratitude. Either there's a marriage, we respond with gratitude. Either there is a delay, we respond with gratitude. If there's a denial, we respond with gratitude. If there's a disapproval, we respond with what? Gratitude. Look what the Bible says. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 in the message translation or the NLT, anyone that is close to you. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18. God wants our response in every situation to be with what? Gratitude. See what the Bible says here. He says, let's read together. I want to go. It says, be thankful in our situation for this. Did he say be thankful when things are good? He said, but thankful. That means if I get a rejection, what do I do? Grumble? I'm thankful. When I lose money, what do I do? Break down? I'm thankful. He says, be, care, be thankful in all situations, for this is God's will for those of you who belong to Christ. Let me say this some other way. Everything gets better with thanksgiving and gratitude. If you lost money, if you choose to be thankful, it will get better. If you lost a relationship, you choose to be thankful, it will get better. You know, I've seen people that lost a relationship. And instead of them being negative, they just chose to be thankful. And miraculously, it all worked out better. You know what I've also noticed? Everything gets worse with complaining and murmuring. Everything gets worse. If, if you want to destroy your marriage, just keep complaining about it. If you want to destroy your job, keep complaining about it. If you want to destroy your business, keep complaining about it. Everything gets worse with complaining and murmuring. Look at this. The children of Israel that murmured in the wilderness never go to the promised land. 
The people that were grateful were the ones that got to the promised land. If you want to get to the promised land, I know the things are tough and your business is now in debt. I understand that. The frustration that there are people you have to pay. The frustration that you cannot pay your staff. But the best way to deal with that setback is with Thanksgiving. I understand that you still don't have a baby despite the fact that you are seven years old in marriage. The way to respond to that is not to be angry with your husband and angry with yourself and angry with God. The best way to respond to that is with thanksgiving. I understand that there are things that depress you right now and you're asking yourself where is God? I thought that God is here. Can God be alive and this is happening to me? Look at how I'm single, I'm single, I'm single and honey I'm single and tired I'm single and I just want it. You didn't see that coming, right? Yeah, because some people are just single and honey. Praise God. Let's just go. They're just single and honey. They're like, uh, you said I should not get some, then get me who can get me some. Let's get this thing legally. Glory to God. And some people, it's the fact that you've lost a brother, you've lost a sister, you've lost a dad, and you cannot explain, you cannot really explain how that loss happened and god said either you lost a brother you lost a sister you lost a job you lost money respond with thanksgiving you always know that there are two ways to respond i'm either going to respond with thanksgiving that will get it better or i will respond with murmuring and complaining that will get it worse i want to learn from jesus christ the bible says and jesus christ looked and he said father i thank you the guy is dead like there's nothing that can be done again. It's dead. How do you look at a place where the embassy have decided on your papers and said never? And you say, Father, I thank you. How do you do with someone that the guy walks away and you say, Father, I thank you? Thanksgiving show you trust God that this thing is still under his control. I remember that um, we we're trying to do something. And we lost the deal. And I went to God in prayers. And I said, Father, I thank you. Not because I know, I know that this is gone. But I know that this is gone, but it's not gone. What does that mean? You can rearrange it in such a way that it will never be as if I lost something. Just to let you know, one thing man cannot give you back is time. God is the only one that can give back time. It says, the years that the locust and the caterpillar have stolen. He said, I will restore back to you again. Because some of you feel that time is gone. Time is within a resource within God's control. Glory to God. So why is Thanksgiving very important? Number one, Thanksgiving or gratitude helps to stop negative emotions. A lot of people find themselves very, very stressed. Can I say something? If you're very, very stressed about your work, it's indicative you're not very grateful for your work most of the time. You can be grateful from time to time. If you're very stressed about your marriage, it's indicative you're not very what grateful for that relationship. Anything you find yourself complaining about, most of the time you're not very grateful for it. That's why you find yourself complaining about it. Thanksgiving and gratitude have a way to stop negative emotions. Some of you are here, you're depressed over the state of your finances. And the reason why you're depressed is because it's not what you want it to be. I agree, but you must think about this way. You're not where you used to be. Can I remind you of your past? Can I remind you? Hope you knew at some point you were taking BRT. You've forgotten so soon that BRT was a way of life. But now, any small thing, boat, Uber. I know you have not gotten to your car, but you have made progress. What Thanksgiving does is this. Vision always tells you, go forward. See how far you go. Tell you, say, stop. Look at how far you have gone. Look at where you are. You didn't win the competition, but your name came out. That's something to thank God for. You have not found the man to love you, but people are now toasting you. There was one year, it was as if you were in the wilderness of nobody. <laughs> Glory to God. Someone said, business is not going well. Business is not going well. Business is not going well. But you are not in debt. 
That's something to be grateful for. Some people cannot turn on their phone because if they dare turn on their phone, it will be death. You will just you see them. Don't talk to Anita, this and this. She has HIV. She's polluted. She's this, she's that. Nobody has smart, destroyed your name because you owe money. Something to be thankful for. So why is, what, what was gratitude? Number one, gratitude stops negative emotion. The second thing is this. This is very powerful. A lot of people go through situations and they just don't have the strength to deal with it. They don't have the strength to deal with it. You hear, you know what, I can't deal. I'm tired. Something gratitude does is this. Gratitude produces you joy. That's what the Bible says. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Once you're joyful, you will have strength. If you're too tired to pursue your dreams, that means you're not grateful. Where does your strength come from? Our strength comes from a place of gratitude. Every time you stay grateful, you're just refilling your gratitude. And all it takes to be grateful is to look around and look at what God is doing and what is not done. Not what is not done. Oh my God. Oh, let me say that again. Let me say that again. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. All you need to be grateful is to focus on what God is doing, not what is not done. Let me give you a good example. This really touched me when I discovered this principle. John chapter 4. The Bible says there was an impotent, there was, there was a, a field of sick people waiting by the pool of Bethesda. It was a large, like 5,000 people were sick. Jesus walks to one man that was impotent. He said, rise up and work. And the Bible documented it. And the Holy Ghost showed me something. He said, did you notice in the Bible, I didn't focus on others that were not healed. I focused on who was healed. He said, in your life, focus on what I'm doing, not what I'm not doing. And that's true. Many of you, I understand that your marriage is not okay. But your finance is okay. Focus on that. Focus, your finance is okay, your health is okay, you have, your health is okay, your finance is, you have a great career. Focus on what God is doing, what's not doing. Most of the time, what we do is that we abandon what God is doing and we focus on what is not being done. And you allow one small thing that is not being done to ruin all that God has done for you. I'll give an example. You have a great marriage, you have kids, you have money, you have this. The only problem is that your dad is sick. And you forget about the faithfulness of God in all those areas. And the next thing that God has been serving you all the time, won't me show me your power. And God says, your life is full of my power and glory. Some of you are here. You know, look at how beautiful your life is. The only thing missing is that you don't have a man. And you say, what, what have you done for me, O oh Lord? What have you done? You have a great job. You have purpose. Other ladies want to be like you. People are asking other people, what do you bring to the table? You, your own table is full. Because, are you here? Are you asking, what, what has the Lord done? Come on. Glory to God. So what should I be grateful for? Let's jump and conclude this. Number one. What should I be? Number one, the gift of life. I don't know who is the richest person here, but the richest person here cannot pay for oxygen if God starts charging. The gift of life. The gift of life. Look at what the Bible says. Psalm, one th- Psalm, sorry, Psalm 13 verse 5. No, no, no. Psalm 139 verse 13. Psalm 139 verse 13. Psalm 139 verse 13. The gift of life. See what the Bible says here. He says, oh yes, you shed me first inside. Then out, you're from the, my mother's womb. I thank you. Hi, God. You are breathtaking, body and soul. I am marvelously made.
you know, I posted a picture and someone said, Pastor Walaki, the pastor of the Gen Z and influencer. And I said, you know, you don't even know me. I'm just a guy from the village. Yeah, I don't pretend as if I'm an Ikoyo lucky boy. I moved here. Some of you were born here. You were born, you know, with all of this luxury and all of those things. Some of us just came into it. Just got lifting people. That's why sometimes we have to balance the English because the English is a vast problem. So when someone says, I'm a self-made man, I understand you are, but I cannot claim. Like, there's no courage or confidence in me to be able to articulate accurately and firmly, confidently, boldly that I am self-made from where to where. How did that algorithm come to pass? If you are looking for someone, God has helped, point at me. Because I am the one the Lord has helped us. Sometimes, I just say, Lord, why? What did you find in me? Just mercy and grace found me. So what am I grateful for? I'm grateful for God's mercy, God's prayer. I'm grateful that God pays attention to me. God will make my life behave as if I don't have mistakes. He will decorate it. When I make mistakes, he will cover it. Then when I do something good, he will put megaphone. I say, see, 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 see. Some people, the only one mistake, their life is over. I met one guy that was sharing with me how he had a child outside wedlock. He said, Pastor B, you don't believe it. We only had sex once and I became a father. He said, it seems like, he said, it seems like African magic, but that was exactly my story. Meanwhile, some of you. <laughs> if it's sex and me full pregnant. The song we'll be singing for you is count your blessing, name them one by one. And you'll see what the Lord has done. Then you know that what your grandfather did was a joke. Look at Psalm 8 verse 3. Psalm 8 verse 3. Let's close. I want us to close. Psalm 8 verse 3. Psalm 8 verse 3. This is very powerful. Psalm 8 verse 3. This is very powerful. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say I am the one you have showed mercy. See what the psalmist said. He says, I look at the macro skies. Dark, huge and enormous. Your handmade sky jewelry. He says, the stars are jewelry to God. Moon, stars, mountain they are certain. Then I look at microorganism, small me, and I wonder, why do you bother with us? Why do you take a second look? You don't understand, there are 8 billion people in the world, yet when I pray, God pays attention. He says, the very air on my head are not counted. He said, they are numbered. Who am I? Not even because I'm perfect. Because, let me tell you, the major problem is that many of you ascribe too much to yourself. And unfortunately, you will come under stress. You know why? Because when things happen that you can't control, they don't know what to do. There's no one to run to. Because in your mind, I made myself. Calm down. You're not that powerful. How do we thank God? How do we thank God? How do we thank God? Psalm 147 verse 7. How do we thank God? So, I want to show that I'm grateful to God. I want to show I'm thankful to God. How do I thank God? Psalm 147 verse 7. See what the Bible says. Bible says, sing to him a thanksgiving song. Play music on your instrument to God. Who fills the skies with clouds, preparing rain for the earth. Then turning the mountains green with grass. You know, God says, the way you thank me is by singing to me. And that's why many of you have problems with me. Because you'll be like, oh my God, see how the guy sang that song and it blew it. And I'm trying to sing that song. Great. And it's not coming out. But the challenge is this. I'm not singing to you. The one that's singing likes my voice that way. You know why he likes it that way? He gave that voice to me. He knows the voice is a croaker cook. And he says, that's what I want to be what? Hearing. Do you know to a nursing mother, the cry of the baby is the sweetest? When the nursing mother is in the, is in the labor room, all she's waiting for is cry. Cry may irritate you, but that's her joy. It's you that my voice irritates, not my God.
And I'm saying so because a lot of men have a problem just singing. They have a problem just singing. They, they're like, I don't have a good voice. I don't have a good voice. Listen, the one that gave you the voice know that your voice is not that great. He says, sing like that. He says, sing to God the thanks given him. So how do I thank God? I go back and I sing and I dance to God. I sing and I dance to God. So one of the ways I thank God is I sing. So singing, so I say this way. God wants to hear your voice. You praise God with the voice that he gave you. Glory to God. The second way, Psalm 95 verse 2. Psalm 95 verse 2. Is it 98 verse 2, I think? 98 verse 2. Oh, glory to God. God made history with salvation. He showed the world what he could do. Look at that. He remembered remember to love us, a bonus to his dear family, Israel. In the in what? In the fact you see now, my background has shown. In the fact love. The whole world comes to attention. Look, God's work of creation. That's me. The second way to thank God is this. It's found in the book of in, in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 9. There are a lot of things to be thankful for. There are people in our church, people never know they will come to church, they will never get, they will come. but if our people get angry, I say, in that church, do they preach salvation? Because they are wondering that, how come people that they cannot get saved, come here, then you see them crying. I just say, no, 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 they can't be getting saved like that. See what the Bible says. The second way you want to thank God, so the first way is by singing and what? dancing to him. Second way, starting from the day you put the sickle to reap grain. He says, starting from the day you had the breakthrough. Starting from the day you got pregnant. You bought the car. Starting from the day that something good happened. He said, count out seven weeks. Celebrate the feast of weeks to God. Your God. How do you celebrate it? By bringing your free will offering. What's a free will offering? Look at what it says. It's free, but give generously as God, your God has blessed you. What does that mean? He said, the way we thank him is by our giving. Then it tells us how to give. He said, give generously the way the Lord has blessed you. You know, just imagine I did a deal with, um, with Brother George, Pastor George. And, and you know, the deal is two billion naira, And he comes to say thank you. And he brings 20,000 naira. You know what I'll tell him? I'll say, Pastor, thank you so much. Eh? Your children need that money more than me. Give it to them. The reason why is that is thank you is not commensurate with what was done for him. Many people give thanksgiving offering, but it's never commensurate with what the Lord has done. You had the child. How will you value that with a 1,000 an hour offering to fear choir? You got engaged. How will you value that? God gave you the grace to be married. How will you value that? Some will say, I will just sing and dance. No, you, you pass your law school exam. You pass your final exam. How would you value that? He said, by giving an offering, give as generously as God, your Lord has blessed you. So how do you give? Number one, so, so how do you give? How do you give? Look at what the Bible says here. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. So I show gratitude big to God by giving back to him. I show God I'm grateful by what? By giving, somebody say, I show God I'm grateful. By giving back to him. My offerings represents my gratitude for his blessings of the past, of today, of tomorrow. I'm going to say it together until everybody says, say my offerings. Say my offerings represents my gratitude of his blessings of the past, of today, and of tomorrow. That's what I do. Every time I give, I remember where God brought me from. Do you know it's so blessed that for you to have is even a blessing. Someone to give, they don't have. And that's why, before I came to Thanksgiving service, I was just praying, Lord, my Thanksgiving offering, what should I do? And I, have a, I had a figure in my mind, this is what I should give. I said, thank you, Jesus. And I gave my Thanksgiving offering. That's how you give a Thanksgiving offering. I said, Lord, you blessed me so much. Put a figure in my heart what you want me to give. One lady sent a letter. She was a widow. And she wrote about all the things that the Lord had done in her life. Protected her since her husband died. And said, I'm giving. I'm not sure it was 200,000 or 1 million. She said, that's my Thanksgiving offering. 
I said, oh, wow. Some of you, maybe it's a 10,000, maybe it's a 100,000, maybe it's, some of you watching this, $200, $300, one million now. I say, this is my Thanksgiving offering. See what the Bible says. How do you thank God? One of the ways you thank God is this. It's, it's there. Look at um, Proverbs chapter, chapter 3, verse 9. Verse 9, you know, it, it says this. It says, give him the first and the best. One of the ways we honor God is even by Titan. That Titan is the first. If you've not been Titan, today is a great day to start and say, Lord, let me even use my title. Thank you. He said, Hold on, give him the first and the best. He said, Your bands will burst, your wines, your wine vat will bring over. Believe the word of God. This is not a pastor's word. Believe his word. The third way that God wants to do. So you, how do we give? Number one, by giving our tithe, by giving thanks, giving offering. And the way you want to give is by letting God speak to your heart and say, Lord, I want to give to thank you for what you've done for 2023. What do you want me to give? And the last way is this. How do you thank God? First Chronicles chapter 16 verse 8. First Chronicles chapter 16 verse 8. First Chronicles chapter 16 verse 8. Are you ready? Let's just get that one to go. Thank you. Thank you. You live on sound. I save you a minute. Praise the Lord. I'll read it for you. He said, Thank God. Call out his name. Tell the whole world who he is and what he has done. You know what? People that don't share testimony, I have a problem with you. Because you want God to do something in the public, but you, don't, you want to keep it in the private. He said, Sing to him. Play songs for him. Broadcast all his wonders. You will do broadcast on your WhatsApp. And say three things I'm grateful for this year. Number one, number two, number three, number four. He says, reveal in his holy name. He said, broadcast all his wonders. God seek us. Be, he said, do what? Be jubilant. What are you grateful for? And the reason I'm saying so is that when something bad happens, you are quick to put on your status. Men sha. You are quick to put on your status. This, the in sons of Eve, this Nigerian government, I'm sick of Nigeria. But when something good happens, you will talk. Then your friends are homeless and wondering, but you pray, why are all your updates very negative? You have never put one day, God did it. Wow, God blew my mind. And they wonder, I want me to know the God that has never something to do good for you. And God says this, Call out his name. Tell the whole world who he is and what he has done. Praise God. Who wants to share a big testimony with us of what the Lord has done this year? Just one. Anybody. Just big. Something that will break our minds. Who? You want to come, come, come and share. Come quickly. Just climb on this. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Good One minute. Yeah. Good afternoon, church. So, I am the one that God has shown mercy, especially this year, 2023. So, I've had... I've been the brokest person anybody can think of. Not because I don't work hard or I don't have plans for what myself. What did the Lord do? But God changed my life um, after research, yes. So I'm actually in the tech industry and God blessed me with a new job that I never thought I was going to have. After how many? Ten failed contracts. God Ten failed contracts. Yes. And God kept giving me contract back to back. I didn't even advertise, you know. People kept referring that me. That is and all awesome. That. Praise the Lord. More testimony. Hallelujah. Let me take another testimony. Yes, yes, yes. Please come. Yes, praise the Lord. That is fantastic. My sister. Come, come. My sister. Let me tap her. That is fantastic. God is going to do more. Yes, please. The microphone is behind you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, 
my testimony is an actually an old testimony. It's not a this year testimony. It's a testimony that I was supposed to have given a couple of years ago, but I just didn't give it. And I want to give it today. Um, in 2019, um, I was diagnosed with septic arthritis in my left leg. Um, it just happened overnight. One minute I was fine, next minute I couldn't walk. Uh, and um, I was misdiagnosed for a couple of days. So the infection was spreading. And I got to see a specialist who said if I didn't have surgery in 48 hours, they'd have to cut off my leg. So um, we had to do emergency surgery in 24 hours. They got the infection before it spread. Um, for three months, I was bedridden. I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything. I was just wow. at home, from home to the hospital, hospital to home, home to hospital, hospital to home. I was very, very depressed. I went through serious depression. I lost a lot of weight. I'm not a big guy in the first place, but I lost a lot of weight. And I was seriously you know, asking God, why, 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 why me? Why this happened to me at such a time when you know, the orbit, everything was going well for me in my life at that point in time. Mm. And then I just couldn't move. You know, it was, it, was, it was a very tough time for me. But I thank God for it because it has made me a lot more grateful wow. to God for every single thing and everything that happens to me in my life. I now know that there are things that are out of my control and I don't bother about that. All I just do is give thanks to God for every day that I wake up, every day that I go to that sleep, every day that I come home, every day that things happen for me, blessed be. That's it. And I just want to say, always be, be thankful. Just be thankful to God because you never know when something can happen and take things away from you. So just be grateful and thankful for everything that you have. Amen. Thank you, sir. All my life, you have been so full. Let's start from the top. Good. Every breath. I was saying. Of the goodness of God all my life. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able sing of the goodness of God. Stand on your feet, let's pray. Spread out your hands and thank Him. Spread out your hands and thank Him. Spread out your hands and thank Him. Lord, we give you praise and glory and praise and glory and praise and glory. Father, we give you praise and glory and praise and glory. Go ahead and thank Him. Go ahead and thank Him. Amen. Let's pray together. Just, I also wanted to pray that God would inspire you what to give as your Thanksgiving offering today. I wanted to pray and listen to it on the inside. And Father, in Jesus' name, all our lives, you've been so, so good. What is man that you're mindful of here? We've just come this morning, this afternoon, to say thank you. Accept our Thanksgiving. I'm praying that everyone that you're inspiring in their heart about the things you're offering, when they give it, that you will also accept it, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen.